Okay. Uh, hopefully you would have all watched the video now. If you haven't, they're all on um, our WordPress blog, and Matt's put the link there too. Matt, could you just bring up Rose's slide, and last slide, and I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to um, raise a couple of the questions that are prominent to Rose's presentations, and then we'll move on to Jean. Okay, so a couple of questions for Rose then. Um, so the first one was about Junio and Android. Junio does work on Androids, but not all Android devices, unfortunately. Some of the older ones, um, I've been trying to create a list, but I don't have it with me, unfortunately. They're just too old to use it, unfortunately. It's the wonderful world of technology always going forward. But most will work. Okay, uh, the next question, which I think we've all had a lot, um, so there's lots of answers to this, is about could you do the same thing without AR, basically? It's a very interesting question, and it's one that various people involved in our project are still not convinced about. It's a very interesting thing that you can use augmented reality as a way of providing links, of providing things. It's a very valid use of it. But yes, there is the question, is it augmented reality, if you're doing that with it? However, I think the really important thing here is to show what can be done with it and then hand over to the people who are actually using it. My role in all of this is very much as a facilitator, um, someone who's providing a technology which then can be used in a myriad of different ways to actually project. Um, one of the things that our academic Lucy Robinson is very keen on is actually getting the students to create their own augmented reality, whether that be them actually doing it or coming up with the ideas and then someone else doing that, but using that to show them how to do things. Also, the location-based is a very interesting thing. Um, that can be used to place various different things into the locations in which they did exist, might exist, could exist, should exist, who knows. That really does put things into a different space and allow you to start thinking about things in a different way. And that's something else we're looking at here. But certainly, it's not a question that is answered. For kids, um, there's so much going on in schools, it's brilliant. It's really all about engagement and kind of bringing them something that they understand and can use. Further education, very, very much about training exercises. There's been some brilliant work on how to provide training videos and training diagrams. Absolutely amazing. Um, but higher education, we're still working on that, and that's hopefully what you'll all be able to start thinking about and get sorted for us. Um, I'd really recommend going onto the blog um, and watching um, the videos by Lucy Robinson and the ones by Guida Armstrong. Um, they sort of answer this question as well. It's also worth looking at all the different examples of AR that we've developed through Scarlet and Scarlet Plus, and there are some that properly augment the reality and there's other ones that just provide that contextual information around the object at the point of use. I think for me it's all about this early stage of experimenting and giving people like University of Sussex and Creative Arts the skills so they can start experimenting as well. And I do hope that in a couple of years time we'll be much clearer about how augmented reality really can work. I think to get to that point to be producing fantastic augmented reality apps that are really benefiting the student. We have to do all this sort of experimental work at the moment and ask these sorts of questions. So I thought that one might come up and thank you. Um, and by the way, I'm going to say at the end that we've got an AR discuss list. So this would be exactly the sort of question. It'd be great to get everyone talking about um, on there. Just trying to see if there's any more questions that have come up. Um, I think many people have been discussing this question, which is great. <laughs> so, um, right, what I'd like to do now is to hand over to Jean. So, Matt, if you could bring up Jean's slides. Jean, if you could turn your lock your talk on and we shall turn ours off. And hopefully in a minute or so, we should hear from Jean. Oh, hello. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Jean Basher, I'm curator of the Craft Ready Centre Collection. Um, and I'm going to give you, um, I'm just going to check my slides working. Uh, 
Matt, I think you'll need to um, go forward for me to the next slide. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, I'm going to give you an overview of the Craft Study Centre collections, um, um, its history, um, and what the CSC is doing today, because that um, gives you an idea of the context for AR and how, um, and how um, we can actually use it to enhance um, learning and teaching in the University of the Creative Arts as well as um, the visitors who come to the museum. Um, and how to embed it within um, the practices here, because um, until um, Laura approached me from uh, Minus, um, I hadn't heard of AR at all, so it was completely new to me. Um, and, and, and when she said, oh, you know, one, developing one application would be sufficient, I thought, wow, you know, this isn't going to take long, but um, it's so cutting edge that it's been really interesting experience for us to to embrace it. Um, it's also um, very much a developmental thing. It wasn't important about um, the actual um, outcome of one AR application, but actually the processes and the learning experiences and the things that didn't always go right on the project and the things that did go right. Um, and my role has been um, in and content developers, so very much liaising with um, people in the University for the Creative Arts, and as Rose said, building a team, um, actually um, raising people's awareness of what is HR, what is AR, and showing them examples of it. Um, and um, the way to raise our learning technologies has led on the technological side, um, and that is way above me. So I'm just going to move on to give you an insight into the Craft Study Centre. So um, next slide, please. Um, okay, we're, um, we're a collection of 20th century and contemporary crafts, um, founded, was founded as a trust in 1970, um, originally opened as a museum in Bath in 1977. It's always been a university collection, so it's also had a very, also had a very strong uh, research unit, um, and I just want us to um, make collections available to students, to researchers um, with strong research outcomes. They want it to be a handling type collection, um, and uh, in our collection we have wooden furniture, um, textiles printed in work, calligraphy, and archives to support that. Um, and it's, the collection is strongest in the, 20, uh, the period 1920 to 1970. Um, and all, we also have a large collection of um, so sub-collections, makers reference collections. So, for example, uh, Bernard Leach collected ceramics from the Far East, and some of those date back several hundred years. So that's just to give you a flavor of what we were wanting to apply AR to. So, uh, next slide, please, Matt. Um, this is the Craft Study Centre now. Uh, we moved into the building in 2004. The collection actually moved from Bath, where it relocated, to the Surrey Institute of Art and University College. And um, between 2000 and 2003, we digitised the collection um, whilst the build was um, happening. Um, and we were uh, funded by GIS to uh, create 4,000 images. So the online and actually form part of the resource for the AR application as well. Uh, next slide, please. So the, um, the sort of this the target audience for AR. Um, our remit was to um, embed it within UCA. So we were we worked with a lead um, academic um, who was really good. Um, we wanted to identify how we could actually enrich the student experience by using um, both for um, undergraduate, MA and PhD students. And also, we hope that AR will actually uh, lead to extending it to external audience as well, because the collection is used for doctoral and postdoctoral research students, it's used for personal research, um, it's used by specialist subject groups, it's used across genres. So there's a great interconnectivity between them. So if, you know, I'm going to show you in a moment some of the objects in the collection. We'll build an AR application on that. Um, so if you withdrew um, that, please. Um, 
Um, for example, our Michael Kaji collection, um, who was uh, uh, a leading scientist, actually Potter, has been used by a PhD researcher. They've been used for postdoctoral research um, purposes. They ha it has formed the basis for um, Tanya Harris. Um, book on Michael Cardew, and she's um, a well-known craft writer. My private collectors um, from all over the world, um, we have a regular visiting researcher from the USA. Next one, please. That's a, um, this is um, an image of Michael Cardew, just to show you that we have the archive there. Next one, please. And his archive. Next one, and uh, an image of a few five card you So the ideas were that we could build an application using all those kind of resources. Next one. So coming back to the Scarlet Project, having given you a sort of background to the collection, um, you know, it's funded by NEMA, um nationally designated centre of higher education, based at the University of Manchester. We were funded for. £8,000, um, and we were partnered with Sussex um, and their project, were not, um, and the bid was very fortunately written for us. Next one. So um, our institutional goals were to embed um, augmented reality within UCA teaching and learning, and this was um, something really new for me, which I really enjoyed. Um, because it had to have a lasting legacy, um, and in quite a different way, I think, to um, the um, what we were funded when we digitised the collections, which was a just funded project to gain. Um, so I feel that you know, it's not achieved a great deal in terms of output. We've got something there that can be carried forward if we were if we were had more funding. Um, we've also raised. Awareness within UCA, UCA um, to potential. Um, we've identified interested parties across um, with the university um, by setting up meetings to explain AR. And a lot of people um, didn't know what AR was until they came to that meeting. Um, so I think it's a small but significant cultural change within the university. Um, and we've identified an academic with whom we could work. Um, and we've begun to develop content for students. Um, one of the problems, problems during the um, project, I think it, that is that our um, ed um, educational technologist who is actually leading on that side of it, for personal reasons, had to leave sooner. We might have achieved more otherwise, but I mean, that's part of the learning process. Next one, please. So it's just a matter of uh, how many applications could be created. Well, we've just been working on the one. We started with one application with our um, lead academic, um, and then um, we changed course a bit. We felt that wasn't for him. And that, so that sort of, we lost a bit of ground and time in that. But it, again, it's part of the learning experience. So it's been a very steep learning curve, um, working with very new technology. Um, and I think as Rose mentioned, um, AR has very little, um, it has had very little experience of being applied to the higher education um, sector. Um, I can see some of it in the museum sector, um, which is very successful. Um, and I, also, I spoke to one museum, who, one national museum, who has developed it, and it seemed that the technology had been outsourced to a commercial organisation. So I thought that was really interesting. So we're struggling here with technology and actually the commercial sector who are leading on it. Um, and we simply didn't have the IT infrastructure available at UCA, so we had to develop that as well. Um, and in terms of scope, it was what could be what we could achieve with the results. Um, so our one application, um, all that it is has been significant, I think. Next slide, please. So, I'll go back to our target group. Um, this, is, this has been specifically an internal one. Um, it's been demoed, the one that Marie um, Therese has created has been demoed on undergraduates, 
Um, we just started to do that with MA students, and um, given time, we would have liked to have taken that to the PhD level. So it's a question of how do we embed, AH, embed AR in the pedagogical process of UCA? Um, that's an open-ended question, but I think you know we're getting there. We've, we've sort of set, we've introduced the structures for it, um, and the CSC collections are still under resource. Um, and AR could be applied to that as well in terms of exhibitions um, an AR application could be used for one particular object within an exhibition. Okay, next one please. So, um, ex and externally, again, the way that the collection is used externally that I showed earlier on in this presentation could be used in exactly the same way. I think we could extend an AR application to all those, to doctoral post -op personal research and collecting to special interest groups, to published outcomes, and, and all the other genres that have um, been, been introduced throughout the collection. Next one, please. Um, so that sort of wrapped it up, really, um, of what I've just said. How do we embed AR in the learning process of the USA, UCA? Next one, please. Um, it still remains local, the technology, um, and the implications for future funding collaboration within UCA departments. Um, we've, we've led so far with our learning, um, our leader. Um, we feel that that could be extended to other departments, perhaps the digitization departments from UCA. Um, and it's about finding uh, the right match with um, technological skills. Okay, next one. Um, so sort of coming back, it was very important to identify an academic to work with, um, who could help us embed content within UCA collections with UCA learning and teaching. It's important to identify who can view the collections and whose course could relate to our subject areas, which we've achieved. Um, we've been aligning it with course objectives and aims through our academic lead. Um, we had early discussions with them on how to develop content, based on the knowledge of the CSC collections, um, and we've been able to select relevant subjects that he could contextualize within his course and using the digital assets gathered from the Digital Arts Data Service. Next one, please. So we started off with the little gallery because we felt um, Adrian felt that this was um, could act as a, this was um, a gallery in London that sold crafts between 1928 and 1940. It would act as a portal to the craft world. Um, next one, please. Um, this based uh, we took some images from um, an exhibition from our Mural Road um, exhibition in 2008. Next one, please. And this is Muriel Rose herself, who created the gallery. Next one, please. And the little gallery in the, 90, in the interval period. Next one, please. And today, which is now to modern shops. Um, this is Ellis Street, just off Sloan Square. Next one, please. Next one. And this is um, a window in in the shop in the interwar period when it was the little gallery. Showing and some of the images from the, the, the craft that was sold. Next one. And the displays, which were completely new for the time, um, could they contest? Next one. Next one. Um, and some of the collections, which, well, examples of collections that we have here, printed textiles. So um, that's where we've got to. Um, it's been piloted, um, but unfortunately, because um, for personal reasons, our educational technologies had to leave early, we didn't get quite as far as we wanted to. But we do feel that we can extend AR in our collections. Um, as I said before, we could enrich, enrich the visitors' experience. Um, it's a question, 
how can we make it work further? Okay, I think that's the last one. Hi, um, the reason for choosing Janio, at the time there wasn't um, an image recognition AR browser available on the market apart from Janio. Um, and a couple of people have asked about comparisons and technical appraisals um, between different AR technologies. Um, unfortunately, because it, the technology goes even faster than um, web-based technologies, there isn't a current one which is up to date. Um, there are a couple of reports that have been done over the past few years. One, I think, um, Judy in the chat window, she highlighted from the University of Bath. And there's also a JISC informed document that has some really useful links on there relating to um, starting out in AR and things that you should consider. And Matt, just leading on to that, a question that's just come up, do you think we're limited by the AR browsers? Would we do better with something more focused on teaching and learning? Um, I think we're always limited with what hardware we've got available to us. I think it's just a case of find, finding whether there's benefits which are um, in excess of what we can deliver um, using normal teaching and learning mechanisms. mechanisms. If if we can prove that there is an added benefit to the end user, i.e. the student, then it is a worthwhile um, um, exercise. It's when people start replicating exactly the same experiences on a medium which perhaps isn't the best solution. Thanks, Matt. Um, there's been some questions around equality as well, and I think one around disability. Uh, Matt, have you got anything to say about your experience of working with the students and the equality issues around owning um, uh, devices? Um, with our business and humanity students that we tested um, our, um, our channels with, there needed to ha be some hardware available for them to in certain seminar sessions to be able to use the, the um, content with. Um, there was an issue that came across strongly within our student um, focus groups about whether we were excluding some students without smartphones or um, tablet devices. And I think the only solution for that is to provide some devices prior um, to creating any of the AR content. So you have to plan that into the initial stage when you think about creating content. Are there going to be hard, is there going to be hardware available for the students to access it whenever they need to? Thanks, Matt. Um, there's some questions around student feedback as well. Um, there are some bits on the blog about student feedback. Um, both our projects have only been a year long, and maybe at that point I'd say just give us some more money and we'll do some more student feedback. So by the time we got to the end of the project, um, that's when the students have really been starting to use it. We will try and keep updating the blog with more feedback, but there is some stuff on there if you have a look at the blog about student feedback. Rose, have you got anything to say about student feedback, putting you on the spot here? Um, um, I have the most fantastic student feedback experience. I'm getting some feedback. Close that. Close that. Yeah. You can hear me now. Sorry about that. Um, I had some terrible feedback, feedback in my first session. Um, students didn't get what was going on, didn't really care about it, um, thought we were trying to stop them using archives, really, really um, didn't go so well. I think the big lesson learned from that um, especially now that it's actually being used by the lecturers in their sessions, is you need to be very careful about who you approach and why. If you give someone some technology that's out of context in their learning experience, their learning experience there's no point in them having that. It's not appreciated. It's not something that they need. It's not something that you want. Um, so it's very hard to actually get feedback without disrupting someone's learning because it needs to be in the genuine situation. So that's what we started doing now. We've actually, it's in the lectures. It's um, being used by the students as part of their courses with Lucy and also um, as part of the Observe in the 80s. Really hoping to get something back from that soon. Apparently it has been a lot more positive, which is nice, but 
early days. We'll get something on the blog as soon as we can with that one. Thanks. Um, and Jean, I wonder if you've got any answers to that as well. Also, um, around what media works best for AR. Jean, do you want to say anything about that? Don't worry if you don't want to. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, Marie Therese um, actually did the piloting on the students, um, and I wasn't there. The feedback I got, she's obviously the better one to comment on that. The feedback I got was we were actually quite surprised um, how little technology the students had themselves. You know, they they didn't we really expected them to be well ahead of us in terms of technology, technology like iPhones, um, and they didn't. So um, that that was quite a surprise for us. Um, Thanks, Jean. Um, yeah. The, I just remember there is a, a good blog post around the different and a good video actually about our academics in Scarlet talking about the differences uh, with they found with undergraduate and postgraduate students. Um, a few people are leaving now and, and I know we've passed time so there have been a couple of other questions um, around cost of viewing data and some technical questions as well. Um, you'll see on my last slide there that we've got an AR discuss list which I think most of you are on so I really would ask that if there's any questions we've not managed to answer, sorry, um, someone's drawn over that for some reason, um, that you um, put it on that AR discuss list and we can chat about it then. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Um, Sorry, we've gone over slightly. And just to say as well that MIMAS have, have shared their experiences now and got University of Sussex and Creative Arts starting to develop AR apps um, and experimenting and having these discussions. If you'd like to do some AR work with us as well, we'd love you to get in touch with us and we can talk about potential projects. Or put them on the AR discuss list and we can sort of have a chat about what would work and what, what's the best way in the future to develop AR to enhance the student experience. Okay, thanks very much everybody, especially to the presenters. Bye.